Hi, welcome back to another episode of Tuba People TV, where we talk about our old Jacobs all the time. Um, Puddles and I are here in Anderson County, Tennessee, with Glenda Coutier, a longtime friend, and Felix, the cat. <laughs> The wonderful, named, wonderful cat. Named for Felix Mendelssohn. And his sister's <laughs> name is Fanny. That's right. Oh, yeah. Oh, the other cat is Fanny. Yes. Perfect. Oh, how about that? Wow. What if it really is them? <laughs> hmm. They're they were not, pretty tight. They're not very musical. Oh, okay. All right. Well, Glenda is a long time, long time <laughs> friend. We were in school together in Chicago. And uh, uh, wonderful trumpet artist. And uh, uh, I, when I interviewed Dan, your husband, a couple summers ago, uh, it came up that uh, you had also had a lesson with Mr. Jacobs. So I'm very curious, uh, just what you, what, uh, what drew you to that lesson in the first place, and and what that was like for you. I had heard a lot about him um, through Dan um, and other brass players, um, but. I probably wouldn't have gone for a lesson if I hadn't heard something that he had said about women and playing brass instruments um, that encouraged me to come and, and hear what he might have to say to me specifically. Hmm. What, what were those things that, he, that you heard him say? He was very egalitarian about the women's ability to play brass instruments well. Um, at that time I was uh, suffering some insecurities about that and he was um, always saying things like um, um, you women might have uh, less wind capa uh, lung capacity than men but that doesn't impede playing it just means that you'll need to breathe more often um, so that was the the main thing that I took away from that and I still use that in my teaching today um, that um, Breathing is um, something we all do, <laughs> right? And um, we can all do do better and do well. Um, and there's no reason, no gender uh, reason why um, a female can't play as well as a as a male. So. Yeah, I remember. You know, I think our generation is, as I look back upon it, this sort of maybe the transitional generation. Um, where it, wherein more female participation was welcomed in the especially in the brass mm -hmm. the brass field and, and music in general mm -hmm. I, I do recall uh, that uh, when we were in Chicago at that time there weren't that many females in the Chicago Symphony yeah. and they kind of had to carve out a, a dressing room for the for the ladies mm -hmm. um, out of the yeah uh, they stuck out yeah and now it's yeah, pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, so what, basically, what you're talking about with uh, with with Mr. Jacobs is there was no physical reason that females couldn't be successful mm -hmm. uh, brass play as a brass musician, brass artist. Just the bow probably is going to be shorter in mm -hmm. terms of the the, the wind capacity. Is that mm -hmm. so? You'd need to take take more breaths, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a little more often. But uh, uh, then what, what did you find out in that lesson with him? Well, I found out that I had um, subclinical asthma. He had a lot of equipment that he used um, to measure lung capacity and how you were using the air. Um, and I just, uh, we still have those uh, on the shelves and I have used those through the years as well because it's such good illustration of um, what the air is doing even after it gets started. Um, so I found out that I have this uh, subclinical asthma and um, was able to get uh, an inhale or have myself, um, I, I would probably never would have seen a doctor otherwise mm -hmm. about it because uh, I just didn't, I wouldn't have noticed it. Mm -hmm. And it does make a, a, a difference. It's very helpful um, in, in situations where I need it. So. Just that extra bit of air. Yeah, it's more openness. Yeah, I mean, it helps me feel relaxed, like I can get the air that I need. Yeah, I guess probably not even not only just that extra capacity, but also the uh, Felix is at work. <laughs> also, the uh, just getting out more rapidly when you need it. Yeah, uh, out yeah, more rapidly. Right. 
Yeah. Well, uh, anything else in that lesson that uh, that you had with him? Did he? Do you remember anything? Um, he was very um, so personable, and um, more. I think for the first time in my life, someone who was great became a real person, and treated me as a real person. And there was a. It was just a very relaxing um, interaction, and it was the first time that I had met him and yet it was um he was very disarming and very um, um gentle and kind and and you know open and accepting and so uh, i walked away after the lesson thinking that wow you know they're um i just spent an hour with someone and it's like i i it was my uncle or um, mm -hmm. and instead of um, so I, I was really relaxed and just able to take in everything that he was saying do you feel like you besides that information about the, the asthma cl subclinical asthma do you, do you remember anything from that one lesson that you, you walked out of the, the, the studio uh, in terms of your plane being that he helped me with that or anything in particular or just a general you just have a general memory of yeah, um, I think that I I think my thinking was um, altered at that point in that um, I realized that there was a lot ahead and that there really is um, no limit to applying the um, the air and what the air is doing um, to brass playing and um, to singing, to making it like a, um, a song. And um, I was able to integrate that with um, choir work that I later did with um, Greg Fountain at, at Northwestern University. And um, I, all, it's just stayed, it's, what I learned, what I, what I have experienced with him has threaded its way through all of my my career um, because it just it is so um, it's a it's such a baseline and everything can be uh, integrated and fit in around it in terms of my philosophy about how I play and how I use the air. Um, so that air is this is the is the thread that you're talking about yeah. that you've integrated. Okay, so just yeah. using the air. Great. Well, that's that's really wonderful. Well. Uh, it's a it's a brief interview, but uh, nevertheless very valuable. I hope and, so. <laughs> uh, really appreciate uh, you inviting us in to see Felix <laughs> and Fanny. I know Puddles is up there. He's you know hoping that there would be no conflagration <laughs> with the cats and his feathers. Um, but uh, before he climbed the mountain top of the keyboard, he did ask me to. Uh, be sure and give you this genuine Tuba People TV uh, water bottle as yeah. a way of saying thank you. I'm so delighted. Thank you. Thank you, Glenda. <laughs> it's great to see you. Good to see you. Really good to see you. And now back to you. But wait, there's more. <laughs> uh, just after we stopped the camera, Glenda, Glenda uh, had something else to add. So. Yeah, I wanted to add that um, the inhalation is um, key. To, to everything and that my, what I've discovered with my students lately and, uh, and I do trace back to uh, Mr. Jacobs is that if you don't get a good inhalation it's like a driving a golf ball you don't get a good a drive you can't move the, the ball it won't go where it needs to be and um, if you do get a good inhalation if you do have a full free inhalation with the energy um, adequate to whatever note you're um, about to release, then um, you can you have it. You have the energy, you have the power, and it all comes from that that air and that inhalation. So really, becoming a specialist in in inhalation is um, something that came from my exposure to Arnold Jacobs and all the people that worked with him that I went to school with and that I studied with. That um, the inhalation in the air, preserving the air, and, and having uh, the best quality and character of inhalation is absolutely key. And 
it drives it drives the ball. <laughs> is there is there uh, a lot of times when I'll see trumpeters, especially students, mostly students, you know, they're really they're not really breathing much, trumpeters. And uh, you know they're making a sound and they're playing the phrase and everything they're getting through it and all, but it doesn't seem like. I mean, I always think it could probably sound better if you use more air. But then there's the whole trumpet doesn't take as much air thing. What what's what do you? That is that is a the crux. That's an interesting um, uh, conundrum there. Um, but absolutely, we do need to play from fullness, and that is something that mm -hmm. Arnold Jacobs uh, taught, and that. Um, yeah, it's like, and, and because he was a singer, and singers never start a phrase at half capacity. So the the character of the sound is different when you start from fullness. Mm -hmm. You reach the half capacity, and you can you can push through the half capacity point and still be relaxed and still have that free sound. Mm -hmm. But if you start at the half capacity or point of repose, I believe is what yeah, right. he called it. Mm -hmm. Um, then you've only got tenths to go from there, and and it sounds that way. And trumpet players make the mistake of thinking that because it's a smaller tube, they they don't know what to do with all that air. And it actually makes some of my students have actually been afraid when they get too much air. It it makes them so uncomfortable that they they have to get rid of the air before they play. You know, and I take them through some exercises where they hold and sip and hold and sip, and really start from that fullness that. Um, Mr. Jacobs, um, and all good vocal teachers teach the same thing. The air never stops. It's either you're either inhaling or you're exhaling, mm -hmm. and um, um, that it's that's the it's playing from fullness is where the power comes from. When you have the student take in a, a full or fuller breath, and they're playing a a long phrase, do they ever complain about feeling uncomfortable? Do they feel like they're holding the air somehow? Or what do you talk about with that? They usually, um, once they once they are able to do it, then they, they, it, their eyes are opened. And okay. they, yeah, they, they're amazed. And then they want to do that all the time. Right. <laughs> so it, have to, it has to become a more of a habit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for, for the tuba player, we're always saying, waste the air. Take it in and waste it. Don't try to. Uh, don't try to. Compact. Meet, yeah. Don't try to to uh, meter it. Don't try to hold on to it. Just get rid of it. But with with trumpeters, and you, you, the phrases are some can be somewhat longer. And yes, and we we want to spin the air slower. That's how I I put that to them. Okay. But you want to start from that same place. Okay. Very good. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. <laughs> Glad I thought of that. <laughs>